Welcome back. We're doing, according to Studio K, some actual shogi before we do some shogi. So this is some puzzle, the 5 to 11 moves. Um, and we have in hand a rook, bishop, gold, lance, and five pawns. Um, thankfully, you know... We only have 5 to 11 moves to complete this, so we're not going to be placing all 5 pawns. Um, yes, yeah, so this is not constrained by rules that you might see for more rigorous shogi puzzles. The goal is simply to checkmate here. My first inclination would be, well, let's just check across the rank. But since this is a puzzle, my first inclination there would be wrong. Second... I think, like, we have bishop check 3-3 three, three, and 3-1, three, or we've got third, a gold drop at 3-2. Maybe a gold drop at 2-1 if things are absolutely nuts. Also here, they've got a rook, we've got a horse. So this horse corrals the king, preventing it from advancing this way. Um... And they can defend with two silvers and four knights, but they don't have any golds to defend with. So, where does that leave us? Um, not very far from where we started. Even finding the first move here seems pretty rough. I would like to play gold 3-2. King takes a horse 5-4 and hope that that mates somehow, but we need four pieces for an attack to never run out. Typically we need more than one attacker for an attack to even have any chance of prevailing, so that can't be right. Second thought would be drop either a gold or a bishop on 3-3. Three, three. If we start with the gold... Their gold takes it, then we check across the rank, they block, then we check on 3-1. It doesn't get us anywhere. Um, third, say let's check on the second rank, say 2-7. They block on 3-2. Um, and then we drop our bishop on 3-1. If king takes, we could drop a gold on 4-2, and the king runs to 2-2, and we've made it easily. So, checking on the rank seems reasonable. Um, now, they could do other interpositions before dropping on 3-2, but those are considered futile and not counted. Um... Unless, like, somehow there's some stalemate trap or some craziness. Some pawn drop mate trap, rather. Due to, like, dropping on 4-2 and the rook taking and promoting. But I don't think there's a pawn drop mate trap there. I'd be stunned if we promoted on 4-2 after they drop there. They block with something else. No, that's a really simple mate. So, yeah. To avoid spending all day on this... Let me go with my impulse here and say it's going to be rook drop 7-2. Let's just check. They drop here. That's mean. You're not supposed to do that. Let's uh, become. Okay. So that's already five moves. I'm not impressed. I didn't think it would do that. And it's going to count those as being moves for purposes of this sequence um, being done in 5 to 11 moves. So this is the sequence I found. Pio has only this hand, it says. I don't know what that refers to, but we jammed it. So if I'd knew, known it was going to do those futile drops, I would have started a bit closer. But uh, we found a checkmate. Is this the solution to the puzzle? Because this took us 13 moves. If I dropped it on 6-2 instead, that would have been 11. 
The variation I was most concerned with, um, I don't know if I can go back in the move list. Oh, yes, I can. Let me zoom out one so I can have access to the move list and to the board. So the move I was concerned with was not this capture of the bishop, but rather the king trying to escape. But now I plainly see that this bishop would promote and checkmate in similar fashion. So um, I feel like there should have been a trick here somewhere. Like this knight drop on 6-2 looks bizarre, uh, but I seem to have pretty much got it. Yeah. Okay. I suspected a trick because so many puzzles I've done lately have had tricks, but this seems to be the gist of what they were aiming for. If you wanted it one move faster, you would have dropped the rook on 6-2 instead of 7-2, but we did succeed in checkmating the, this bird. So, hooray for me. Hopefully we enjoyed this puzzle-solving adventure. I guess the most illuminating part for me was we had many candidate moves. We could have dropped the rook anywhere along this rank. Probably not 1-2. Could have dropped a bishop on 3-1 or 3-3 or gold on 3-3. We had all these pawns in hand, and it's just a matter of figuring out where do you start. I guess by process of elimination, you can like reason that dropping on 1-2 they take and then moving this horse, they just block somehow, and the attack slows down too much as they build up a large castle. So you could start discarding moves by process of elimination. And what's left is this check across the rank. This sometimes works. More often there's some kind of mental shortcut where you just try to envision the shape you're using to surround the opposing king, as opposed to looking at variation by variation and eliminating everything else except the solution. But um, yeah, the, that shortcut of determining the shape and determining the defensive shape is more than a bit advanced and i'm not there yet so that was our puzzle let's go on and play some games on shogi wars uh, so here we go oh look at that we have a quiz question here too presumably from a recent game let's take a look at it before we start playing so uh, i'm going to keep this particular overlay in place because uh, the, uh, the board does not align perfectly uh, with the way that uh, you would see a game aligned on this page. So this is the best way to render it. We're enjoying this today by virtue of using the alphabet pieces just for fun. It's going to be more fun this way. So we have a choice. Do we take this pawn or do we take the gold? Now, yesterday after we played the games in the video on our live stream we referred the game to uh shogi gui with the assistance of giko 2 and giko 2 said that this capturing the pawn was ridiculous and we should just take the gold so let's take the gold promote and we got it right hey shows that we remembered our lesson from yesterday conversely um this tool determines the same way as uh, Shogi Gui that yeah, if you sacrifice this silver there's this interposition and so if you take the gold at this point the rook takes and your own rook's scope is very limited and something not too dissimilar happened in the actual game so that's a reminder of how things went yesterday and with that said uh, let's start play right um, let me dismiss other windows that aren't part of this. Take a deep breath, and we'll begin. Also, let's get a proverb up here for some inspiration. And we'll say, welcome back. Here we are again. We're going to play some 10-minute games. There is a tournament ongoing where if you win enough games, you can get a new animal-based avatar or an avatar that contains a chicken in it from the Dubutsu set. So we're aiming for that. 
We're going to try to win some games this week. Uh, as part of the 10th year commemoration of Shogi Wars. Uh, the game's been disabled. Can we try again? Perhaps. Perhaps we had an opponent. We had a disconnection there. Let's see if we can connect to an opponent. Um, I'm thinking we'll play Central Falrook for fun. Good luck. All right, here we go. So two things are going to make this adventure fun. One, who doesn't enjoy um, the alphabet pieces? And two, Central File Rook is a fun opening. So there it is. It has been played. Oh, I did remember to switch up my overlay, so good for me. Um, they are playing an aggressive strategy over here. Uh, I will take this time to advance my silver. This early in the opening. Um, I think it's suitable for me to... Yeah, this is fine. And we can bring the silver up once more, as it is protected. And then I could opt to drop a pawn uh, over here. And hopefully not get demolished. I think I've done this before, and I think it's produced a not disastrous result. So we have two pieces aiming at the focal point. If they drop another pawn there, I will take it. They do not drop another pawn there, but now the rook could be subject to attack. Um, so dare I push where my king is at? I don't think so. Well, okay, we're going to deny this bishop opportunity to uh, participate from the edge of the board and try to find an attack somewhere here. Um, could be a bit tricky. I could bring up the silver without getting completely screwed here. Yeah, let's advance the silver. The higher up the board it is, the more aggressively it's placed. And so now... Um, we're going to block this pawn once more. And they give some thought to their own king's position, as they should. It would have been nice to have a stronger attack ready. Maybe I push my king's pawn, but that's risky. Um, yeah, our opponent's defense shape is a little strange, I'll say. Um, yeah, let's consider activating the bishop this way and see whether they push back on this edge. Okay, if bishops exchange, this is a good hole. My king and rook are right next to each other. Let's drop the rook back just in case something terrible happens. Um, Okay, we'll push on this edge to continue taking space. They want to open things. I am not opposed to that. All right, let's attack. I'm going to move my rook off the center file because it's not getting anywhere. Instead, we'll target the king in the castle directly. They've made another target for us in the form of the knight's head. Um, I 
Okay, let's activate our bishop. So if we can open the diagonal to their king, that would be delightful. Hopefully I'm not walking into some kind of a fork. Uh, actually, there is a silver fork hitting my bishop and rook, so I need to be a little bit cautious about that. Um, hmm. I was envisioning bringing the bishop out here. Yeah, now the bishop's safe there. The bishop is between two silvers, so it is super safe here. Um, so then, yeah, we can bring this in and try to mess things up for them. Um, I can I could block my bishop by taking a vanguard pawn. Don't know that I want to do that. On the other hand, this file becomes much weaker if I have the Vanguard pawn. Yeah, let's let's protect my king's head. And open this line for my rook. Continue opening the rook line. And continue continuing to open the rook line. And take the free pawn unless there's a trap. Uh, or unless there's something better. Oh, that looks pretty nice. Um... I mean, things, there are ways to improve this further, but this is not a bad deal. They don't have a lance, so... Yeah, my rook can retreat back from whence it came. Uh, we have a gold general in hand. This could be quite decisive. We have multiple pawns in hand, so let's drop one to open this line. They do voluntarily open that for us. Let's see if they do anything about this active bishop. Also, I have a knight drop that hits two silvers. Also, I have a gold drop that forks everything. Um, say so they do something. Um, hmm. I'm just trying to read this out what wins the most. Something. Let's throw this in first. Ah, they hit my lance. Okay, we reinforce this. They promote. They just keep attacking. 
take our pawn. We have multiple pawns to use here. Nifun Sanjubio. Let's keep breaking this castle down. Okay. Let's hit two silver generals. Uh, do I want to take that? Yes. Taking here makes more threats. Here is one such threat. Hmm. Let's continue attacking. Let's continue to continue attacking. All right. See, we both care about king safety, don't we? Oh, right, they have the rook now. Fine. Can't even blame that on Kanji. Because uh, there were no Kanji involved there. Alright, let's check. Make a mate threat. A rook is good at defending against checkmate, but how good is it? Well, there's one way to find out. I don't think that's the right way to try to defend this. Perhaps that was a mouse slip. Thanks for the game. Alright, let's play another. Good luck. I continuously need to be reminded how this goes. Um, despite having just reviewed it the other day. I'm going to wimp out. I shouldn't wimp out, but oh well. Alrighty then. See, with the king in the middle, I know I'm fine there. It's just other positions. I don't know what the move order allows and what it doesn't. Um, so before the king defends this point, I know that I... Yeah, okay, now the king's defending it. Um, but before such a defense occurs, I know I can, like, make this offer and uh, everything. There's things aren't going to implode on me if I make that offer. Um, let's, now that we have um, a space advantage here and they're committing to a low castle, let's play the Vanguard Pawn and see if they have any aggressive intentions. 
Uh, it's good to know. I'll have to review that afterward to see what that opportunity was. Because that could have saved us 10 plus minutes um, if our opponent blunders and I give them the opportunity to blunder. I should at least learn that. Okay, they try to attack my bishop's head again. Um, we're going to continue this castling operation. If they do strike it directly, then um, we'll bring the rook up. But no, they don't. Instead, we have a more normal game afoot, but one where they've exposed their rook. So this gives me a free tempo. Um, I mean, yes, they could win this pawn next to my bishop. No, I don't care. Actually, they can't. Can they? Hang on. Hang on. Let me get this correct this time. Yeah, I can drop my rook back. Um, so if they drop a pawn here, that doesn't help them. Um, I can win the pawn if they drop it here. If they take this pawn, my rook can take... Uh, this file. They could drop a pawn and then I could drop a pawn. So yeah, I am not immediately losing material here. Separately, I could have more aggressive intentions. If I move my bishop, they hit it. So okay, I can only get so aggressive here. Why don't I have a trap? Is the rook trapped? Maybe. If I drop a pawn, they can drop one, and then I might not be able to block this promotion anymore, but I could win their rook. No, I can't, because they always have this escape. Alright, so... The returns on being creative are ever-diminishing, but this pawn is hanging. Their king is reasonably well defended, but their other pieces are blocked, so... It wouldn't be a terrible time to be aggressive, but I don't need to be aggressive just yet. But if I'm not, then... What are we doing this for? Um, if I take here... No, I trap my bishop. There's no trap here. At least not one that favors me. So let's just give my king an escape and stop worrying about things that aren't going to happen. So this all happened because I moved the knight early. If I'd not moved the knight, sure, I, my rook wouldn't be able to escape this way. However, um, like, all the stuff we're looking at, we wouldn't have to look at. We'd just be able to oppose this rook directly and move on with our lives. Um, that is odd. They have not defended these pawns. I do really want to go pawn grabbing. It's going to cost me my knight, but do I care? I should care. Okay, so what the hell is my bishop doing?
Well, okay, there's two things. One, should I care? And two, how much should I care? I think the answers to this is we're, we're not going to care enough. We're going to let crazy shit happen and uh, make sacrifices as we need to for the sake of um, having an exciting attack. Oh, if they try to win this pawn, my rook goes over first. I don't, by default, do bishop takes here. I was thinking about lines where my bishop takes here, they block with the silver, I take the silver, knight takes, and then I move my rook out. But that's completely unnecessary. Um, yeah, what is necessary is that if the rook goes pawn hunting, um, I make use of my rook. And then we can introduce the bishop once we have time to. They're probably going to either move the rook here or keep it on the file. Um, if they keep it on the file, then I could consider taking this, but my bishop might get trapped, so I might want to push this first. I might also want to drop pawns to harass their rook, and then bring my rook over behind my pawn. Um... There might be other ideas, too. Yeah, so my knight is hanging if I don't attack their rook. And if I do attack their rook, they hit my bishop. And if I've moved my knight... Yeah. Well, no, if, I, if they put a pawn to hit my knight, it's fine. Wait, do I do this first, or do I bring the bishop up first? Bishop up, silver block, I retreat. Go home. That's simple. No need to look at the most complicated lines first when the simple line works. So, yeah, we can cut the rook's scope and then drop the bishop back and back again. And then drop a pawn, bring this rook over, and yeah, that'll work. If they want to do something, they... Oh, wait, they can drop a pawn on my knight's head. They didn't. Um... Even after I move my bishop, they can still do this drop. That's not good. So we need this tempo now that I've heft it up. Good thing we had the pawn to drop there. So they're continuously trying to attack my knight. I'll also break in on this file. Um, we've got two pawns in hand. Um. Well, I guess I'm going to be greedy now. Uh, so we're going to continue hitting the rook and make things interesting. We both have the option to break up their castle and keep hitting the rook. Um, so if they fork my bishop and knight, I could take this pawn, promote, and then later hit the rook again. That's probably not best. Better would probably be move the bishop up and then do knight takes pawn again with promotion. So they retreat once more. Retreating... Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Got two pawns in hand and not a pawn more. I think we're fine still. Oh, I missed that. That's creative. Okay, let's just keep fighting. <laughs> so we can take here. 
that's an attack. They've already voluntarily broken their castle. Um... I think this is reasonable. Maybe it's not. So we could use a knight here. And, um, I assumed they would do silver takes. They could have done gold takes, which would have messed this up. But they didn't do gold takes. But they could have. I just got lucky. I think. So I assume they're rook moves, and then I take the gold, and then I take this pawn. And then I promote this pawn, and I promote my rook, and, like, this bishop is still inactive. Yes, I have multiple pieces playing around, but that's fine. Yeah, gold takes, I think, would have been somehow safer, but I might have misread that, too. I was looking at my clock and not reading deeply enough. Anyway, probably either they move the rook or the silver. If they move the silver, I just take a rook. If they move the rook, I take a gold. Um, maybe they drop the bishop to, I don't know, that doesn't seem to make sense to me, but, nope, so, uh, second ago I was quite content with this, now I'm not so sure. Because they do take this knight. And I was going to use this knight to take there next. But I don't have the knight anymore. It's now their knight, so... If I take here, they attack me. I don't know. Which is worth more? Tempo... Or silver. Nifun. That's a false dilemma, because if I take the silver, I still lose a piece. We're just going to attack. This is crazy that I'm considering that, but this lets me hit the rook again. Strange.
slowest attack ever. I'm not happy about it, but maybe I should be. An attack is better than no attack. Oh, well, this actually speeds up very quickly, doesn't it? Assuming I don't block myself. They're going to block me again and again. Memo to self. Bring in more attackers before starting an attack. Or get lucky. Hit the critical point. Wrong piece. Jubio. Thanks for the game. Let's play one more. Yeah, that attack would have been more successful if I didn't launch it too early. Good luck.
7分Bishop's in the way, so let's sacrifice it. Yeah, I'm not seeing a mate. Go for me. Thanks for the game. I think it might have been... I don't know if the king tried to escape instead of gold takes there, how that would have resulted. Uh, but regardless, I seem to have come out with a positive result today. I missed a meeting too. Yeah, indeed, I do need to work on my suma. So today we've increased from 15% to 17%. 
in our seemingly never-ending quest to hit one dawn. Will we ever hit it? Who knows? Does playing with the alphabet pieces make the game more fun? I think so, but let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.